Hi guys, SC Dawa, the Speaker's Corner, Dawa channel there now, called Speaker's Corner Online or something, has released the next live stream recording, this time about profits. We again have panelists all providing their individual opinions, yet <clears throat> nobody defines what a profit is. They simply presuppose a limited creator god who needs to send people in to correct the message this creator god wants normal people to have, instead of simply providing every human being with this message, which after all just consists of a handful of simple rules. Now instead, so the story goes, humans are created by a perfect creator, in fact the best of all creators, who after this act of perfect creation from all sorts of products, including by the way nothing, needs to run tests on this creation without specifying what the tests are, what the pass rate is and what exactly is being tested, all the time knowing the outcome, as these creations were created only for this purpose of being tested here on earth. <laughs> if you're now just as confused as I am, I've done a good job. So these people, the, the messengers or prophets or whatever, who were sent in to correct the flawed message or the flawed understanding of this perfect message, they're not defined, just that they were sent to all nations. Now if Muhammad was the last of these, then there was no nation of France, USA or Angola even a thousand years ago. So what is this? All nations and speaking their language, where it is not clear whether it is their or the language of the recipients who got this message and why it says that those who did not get the message will not be punished if everyone got the message. <laughs> There's a whole lot of contradictions here. And why can't everyone just keep quiet about this then and nobody gets punished? Is that a too obvious question? I think it's too easy, I reckon. Instead, we hear about these so-called prophets or messengers who provide some message with, and they will never learn this, through Proof, proofs and evidences for their claims. Is it five proofs and four evidences? Really? Are these uneducated kids like advice, air, information, as on evidence is an uncountable noun, a singularia tantum, like species or scissors is a singular. Proofs are photographic contact sheets. Why can't you learn this? And no, I know kids might think so. Evidence says is not better than evidence. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the claim is that human messengers were to convey the message as guidance from this particular creator God. Now, let me quickly refute the claims made in the opening statements, which unfortunately makes this a bit of a longer video once again. They have this really tedious routine of someone being allowed one question and then all six panelists then give the individual opinion. So, so there's a lot of ground here since they don't watch the gin and tonic show and don't learn what is useless, false and refuted and simply repeat nonsensical claims. Now their short introduction, what they call this, this takes a full 20 minutes from, you know, total of almost three hours. It starts off with the claim that humans wouldn't be able to fathom the guidance and thus require messengers, humans, who apparently can for some reason. Mansour says they will explain the difference between messengers and prophets and that they need to warn people of the consequences of disobedience of this merciful creator and give glad tidings of what the punishment consists of. Now that's my interpretation. Or is it? And also warn people of the doom or the destruction of the punishment that lie ahead if you don't believe and if you don't do what God requires you to do. Mansour mentions Adam and Eve, but does not explain how they received their guidance, since the Quran was not available to them, nor were there any messengers. We get no explanation of what success or loss consists of or what the consequences are. 
He says, messengers are not go-between, but they are, conveying the message of their God. He can't make up his mind somehow. But then, I doubt I could do any better with the Quran as foundation. Then he claims his God can communicate with people through dreams. So then, wh why exactly do we need messengers then? Or he, this, this creator God, can communicate from behind a veil. Or through messengers and prophets, who are not go-betweens, even when they are. Wow, he's difficult to follow, since he contradicts himself every few seconds. He says that the only foolproof message of Revelation is through prophets and messengers. No, it is not, definitely not, because it uses language, man-made, ambiguous, vague, requiring interpretation. That is the whole problem. On the character of prophets, he mixes up <laughs> no <laughs> he mixes up nobility, which is a social class in a monarchy, and noble. The examples why you would not follow someone are exactly what we see from Muhammad. He was, after all, going by what Islamic scholars in the secondary text like Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim wrote, a pirate who plundered and stole from others. He enslaved, beheaded, tortured, raped and killed. Not the best of people. He even encouraged his men to enjoy raping female captives. Now I have never done any of these things. I wouldn't even think of marrying or having sex with a child. I wouldn't dream of having sex with my own daughter-in-law or my cousin. And Muhammad did all these things. But he is the best of all human beings. But now, Jesus wasn't much better, right? A guy who, according to Christian texts at least, who, he lied, he stole, he treated his own mother like dirt, he propagated slavery and violence. He even told people following him was better than loving your old family. And that even thinking something can get you into trouble with his dad. So, nah, I don't follow anyone, but I just try and be a decent person. I wish Muhammad had. Now, if a man, any anybody, were to approach me and tell me he had a message from God, well, of course, I'd ask which one and why I should believe what he believes. And if this message, then, is to fight and hate, and I tell him and his God to get, you know, to shove off. Muslims don't. They worship the guy. Feel more for him than their own family, even though he's been dead for a very long time. They don't even blink when they are told they shouldn't marry his wives. Neither did Adam and Eve. Or did they? Next up is this um, Hashim. Who, and I've noticed he argues in a very childlike manner, not thinking or considering effects and consequences of what he's saying. And today is no different. He says a prophet is appointed. Now, how do I, as a recipient of this claim, know this? Does everyone get a memo? From God to everyone, I have, with immediate effect, appointed X as prophet of foreign affairs in TFZ or something like that. Did the people in Iceland get a memo that a prophet or messenger had been assigned to them and to expect arrival on date X? That fasting would be something like 24 hours a day now in June, ex you know, due to a missing sunset? Well, no messenger ever made it. No messenger ever made it anywhere except a tiny region around Jerusalem. He will, he, he will explain the difference between messenger and prophet and says a messenger will take a law and the prophet will then take that law. What? He, he gets horribly confused, rambling on about messengers and appointed prophets and character integrity. Okay, if he's making sense, I don't get it. He says Muhammad performed loads of miracles but he's not able to provide us with one. And, and I'm sorry, this is unbelievable for me. He really says that Muhammad must have been a prophet because he said that naked Bedouins will construct tall buildings. Really? This is his evidence that Muhammad was indeed a prophet. He doesn't say which naked Arabs, where, will construct what building, how tall, and that Arabs don't have the ability to do that, but sell oil 
they had no idea what to do with to those who do and then hire those very people to build towers for them from the money these people paid them for the oil. It's truly bizarre what nonsense these people come up with. So other than the claim this Muhammad repeated some words he claimed he heard, Hashim has nothing. Of course, if Muhammad was a real person, he could have made up everything. And why not? Someone did, badly, I admit, but followers follow blindly, ignoring the blatantly obvious flaws, inconsistencies, contradictions and mistakes in the doctrine he supposedly heard from his perfect God and call it revelation. No, Hashim, science can't explain miracles. <laughs> Because, number one, they don't exist, and two, if science could, this would not be a miracle, would it? Come on, grow up, please. Oh, boy. Next up is the next apologist, called something like Ijazdetrin, I don't know. Now, his logic is impeccable. The Quran says different nations were created, and the Bible says different languages were created. That's why there's a difference in how the messages are distributed. Do different nations speak different languages? Oh, man. <laughs> he claims that the message of Tawheed has existed. What Tawheed? What is that? It's not even in the Quran. So how can a messenger transmit a message if it's not God's word? Come on, scriptures, stay focused. He says he learned in high school. He went to high school. That people in the Caribbean thought the Spanish invaders were messengers. No, they thought they were gods because they looked like one of their gods with their white skin and beards, transmitted over the generations from their origins. It could be possibly the Nordic region of Europe or Eastern Asia via the Amerindians or something. And a lot of these are still uncontacted today, in other words, left without our interference. Most tribes couldn't explain all natural phenomena and some turned to supernatural causes. Nothing new or astonishing. But today, we had several cultural revolutions here in our region. And we don't need these crutches any longer. <laughs> That's why Islam today is collapsing with the impact the internet is having. And he makes exactly this point, showing that the role model Muhammad, with its brutality and immorality, the disregard of human rights, all this no longer fits in with the standards of the 21st century. And the next guy, full metal theist, adds nothing, just special pleading and misrepresentation of what the sayings of Muhammad claim, which are anything but coherent. And it seems Subur did not pay his phone bill, had no data volume left and just left it. At this point, they put out the link so that people could join. And because I was in a hurry, I immediately did. Typed in the private chat that I had no time, just wanted a short comment this time. No, not book one hour or something. And I was told to wait and got kicked. Well, I, I had to leave and, and couldn't join again. So I'll just present my case here in more detail. What is encouraging, however, is that this account was not blocked yet. Not the usual pattern that I'm used to. Now, I will not go through each and every caller. So the first one simply asks the same questions I'm asking. And that is, why were humans being sent when they were already there? And why use people in the first place when this God knew everything and could do everything? Now, Mansa makes a mess with the summary. As it is not about the divine presence or hiddenness, the physical seeing for the naked eye, but the transfer of information directly to people. Subua can connect for a few seconds and immediately falls for the wrong summary, saying he decides what befits a God and what not. Or meaning that the atheist who is calling him decides what befits a God, but doesn't because Subua decides what befits a God and what not. And a God walking around us is not godly enough for him. Come on. Okay. Why not? Why is it not godly enough for him? Because God does what he wants to do. That was his summary then. Wow. 
What an intellectually inspiring answer. I don't need the answer, God does what he wants to do because that's what he wants to do. Is that all you have? And no, it is not a God complex. That is something very different. I expect a clear message. Is that really expecting too much from a God who claims it's perfect and the best of all and better and all-knowing, all knowing, all capable, all everything? But now saying, I could do it, so why can't a God? That would be a God complex, I suppose. Uh, come, come on, it all boils down to what the claims are made by the Quran and by Muslims. As always, it's always the same thing. And I, I'm going to skip the individual replies as it's simply too time-consuming and too childish, like Hashim saying everything is recorded until the end of time and then says life is a test. How unthinking and totally illogical is that? So, at the end of the day, nobody has an answer. It, if I look at reality, it's painfully obvious that there is no God as is described in the Torah, Bible, or Quran. It thankfully can't exist. Do we have one unified message? No, we have thousands. Do we have a consistent description of a God? No, we have thousands. Do we have a consistent set of rules with a defined outcome? No, nowhere near it. What we do have is a mess of different texts with different gods, all claiming authorship of different texts, all claiming they are the masters of everything and then failing at everything. The questioner realizes this and simply states that if a god, and it's down to the claims again, right? If this god knows and can as is claimed in the Quran, it should, which it doesn't. So why call this a god? We're tripping over this circular reasoning again and again where God claims it wrote the Quran because the Quran says this God wrote the Quran. We need to get away from this and get to the origin, which, come on, it, it's not divine. No God worth its salt would claim authorship of the Quran, seeing how badly it is written. We have the same circular reasoning, by the way, when we are asked what the evidence is we are looking for. How can I know what evidence to expect from a non-existent entity? And... The questioner already clarified it for you. If a God can, then it knows what to do, can do it, and because it's merciful, it should. Doesn't. Wow, these, these guys are not too bright, are they? And, and they all claim to be so educated and intelligent, but they fall flat on their faces after just one question. What is brilliant, if, as they get more vague and rambling on without any concept, the questioner... A person who does not believe gods exist gets better and better, pushing back more and more the quite silly claims which are largely storm and fallacies. I like and will take on the statement. I don't use the label atheist except in the context of religious discussions. Very nice. I like it. Thank you. I'm actually taking something useful from an SC Dawa stream. Now, he clearly shows that the fact that we are having these discussions already show that this is not a God, and there is no clear or consistent message. So why believe it anyway, if it takes humans to clarify it, if this God is incapable of doing it? Oh, oh boy. Okay, now after, after this, we have an hour of irrelevant and off-topic discussions, which demonstrate the impotence of Muslim apologists. Their answer to why did this or that happen is simply because it did. Because God wanted it that way. Because that's how it happened. It seems most Muslims are not really aware what it is they are doing or believing, let alone being able to coherently explain it to others. It sounds like a lot of people don't really like being a skeptic and to investigate, query and research. They submit and quietly follow and then another hour. Now one guy did make an interesting observation. He thinks atheists like me can't accept that the universe can be created by a supernatural entity. Now this is far off topic and completely wrong. I do not claim that there is no supernatural being. And I do not claim to know what the origin of the universe is. That consists of two statements. One, that I don't have a positive claim what it did, and two, I don't have a negative claim what did not cause the origin of the universe. Now, I don't understand 
why they still have a problem with that. Why so many apologists, and it doesn't matter whether they're Christian or Muslim or Jew or whatever, they all think that if I don't believe that God exists, this automatically means I must believe something else. No, it does not. I don't have sufficient information. So I am honest and have the integrity and strength to admit I don't know. Something most Muslims can't process because they're too weak, intellectually I mean. And that was it, almost three hours with just a single interesting question by an atheist. And a lot of waffling with childish, illogical, irrational and superficial reasoning, as well as a ton of special pleading. So. If this continues to be the level of Dawah coming from Muslims today, we have nothing to worry about, as it only appeals to the extremely gullible. They constantly throw around words like sophistry, fallacious, deceptive, illogical, ignorant, yet never once think about a self-check to see if they are guilty of exactly that. But the positive thing is at least Sabor was not there to throw around his useless and irritating sound bites and false quotes. Now, if any of these guys have the guts, which I actually I sincerely doubt, they will take up the offer and come over for a more constructive and objective chat on a Friday evening on the Gin and Tonic Show. Otherwise, see you next time. SC Darwa releases one of their shallow videos. Bye for now.